Hello my soccer universe, for a brief recap what happened over the last two weeks in the Netherlands and in France. We have of course in the Netherlands we had already Feyenoord confirmed as champions with the trophy already being handed out. So the last thing was can Ajax mount an uh, improbable comeback again to catch PSV and still make it into the Champions League? And then, of course, there's how the Europa uh, Conference League playoffs will pan out. This was the major talking about point in the Netherlands. And spoiler alert, Ajax did not make it, although there was a chance that it actually they make the improbable comeback. In France, we have a new champion. And I think more excitingly, I will talk about the new champion in a bit. Uh, more excitingly, we have Lens back in the Champions League. That's a pretty, pretty huge result. Lyon are in rare form at the moment, um, but probably will not make it. Uh, Lille is making a big comeback as well. And then uh, the two big names from the South, OM and Monaco, are seemingly throwing away their seasons late with Marseille, who's looked so set on being second best team, probably not making it uh, into the Champions League directly. And then there's a big name that is in serious relegation trouble in France as well. So plenty to talk about. But I want to start with the makeup game uh, that we had from last of all. But you remember Groningen fans caused the uh, game against Ajax to be abandoned. That game then took place two days later. They just finished play, uh, 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 playing it at the end with a 3-2 win for Ajax. Not as convincing because Groningen is more or less a goner and yeah, was not very convincing, but it was in front of empty stands as well. But Ajax get the three points that actually put them a little bit in touch with PSV and it got even tighter because Ajax then managed to beat Utrecht 3-1 uh, at home through Bergwijn, Probe and Klaassen. Uh, it was a, a Duvika's uh, equalizer in between, which actually gave Ajax a shot, uh, especially since PSV then dropped points. Only a 3-3 three, three against Herrenwein. Crazy game. I mean, Sangare gave uh, PSV the lead, but then uh, by the 60th minute, it was turned around a 3-1 lead for Herrenwein. Only late uh, Luc de Jong and Xavi Simons, who has been in really, really good form, uh, make it a 3-3 three, three draw, meaning that at that point, PSV with the win could have secured already their Champions League qualification spot. At that point, uh, there was still a chance for Ajax catching them since uh, goal difference counts. Uh, if PSV lose and Ajax win, it would have been Ajax at that point, but only a slim chance, like 6 percentage, somewhere like that. Uh, that also keeping the pressure up on Ajax, you know, uh, wanting to go into the Europa League ahead of Ajax uh, with a 3 0 win at Nijmegen. And then uh, two big ones at the end uh, with Vitesse winning against Groningen 6-0 Groningen not really showing up and anymore and Twente a big win over Valwijk 5-0. For Twente this is important because they will be the top seed in the playoff and wouldn't you know it, new Twente jersey up here making its first channel appearance just in case you know the unpacking video will probably come a teeny bit later, maybe in a month or so the way things are going. Okay. Then, yesterday, the last match day, and uh, it was AZ against PSV. A really, really, really intriguing matchup. Because uh, it had all to do with Ajax now. AZ needed to win against PSV so that if Ajax win then against Twente, Ajax go further. However, if AZ win and Ajax lose, they would go into the conference. They, they, they would go into the Europa League, and Ajax would be left with the Conference League. So, very, very, very dicey. And Adzet actually had more of the game, uh, game that was kind of so and so. And Xavi Simons though gave then a little bit against the run of play. PSV the lead, uh, 65th. Carlsen equalizes with a penalty. Then uh, a red card for El Ghazi and um, uh, seemingly, you know, it's, it peters out to a draw. But then Xavi Simons more or less by himself sees PSV going on into the Champions League qualification round where they have been eliminated sometimes in rather uh, weird circumstances and it would not have mattered much for either one. I mean, um, I'd say it would have needed that win more 
because Ajax, despite having a 1-0 halftime lead, were losing 3-1 to Twente. Uh, Ugalde, uh, Piguezelo and Czerny scoring the three goals and Twente, as I said, are now the top seed for the Conference League playoffs. Um, and, you know, last time around, I think they didn't make it into the uh, Europa Conference League because they were, they were drawn against a big name opponent. I want to say even Fiore for Fiorentina, but maybe this time, time around it might happen. So, the final, uh, we also had Utrecht against Emmen, which is bigger than Sparta Rotterdam, another 5 0 Groningen and Herrenveen. They complete the field for this playoff that we'll see here. So, we have Feyenoord are in the Champions League group. PSV going to the uh, qualification. Ajax just escaped with probably, I mean, it's not even the bare, bare move. It's, it's, it's just a consolation prize for them to make it into the Europa League group stage, where they will be a pretty big name, uh, one would think. Then we have AZ are going into the qualification, or maybe are going in that directly in the group, in the group search for, 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 for the conference league, and then the um, uh, last spot will be in the playoff. We have also MN going into the relegation playoff overall. Uh, if we look at the adjusted standings on the other side, we see that uh, Feyenoord are clearly the sensation of the season. Ajax actually performing kind of on par with what you expect, which is uh, rather weird. And you see Vitesse uh, among the non-relegated teams, the biggest disappointment. Groningen though finishing in last. That must be a major, major blow uh, for such a traditional team in the Netherlands. Uh, as I said, we have playoffs. I want to, uh, let's look at the relegation uh, playoffs where Emmen is the only team that's in there. However, uh, Venlo and Breda uh, eliminated higher seeded teams in FC Eindhoven and Willem Dwey. Um, to get in, in, in their uh, Venlo uh, uh, play against Almere, who I think were the top seed in there, but I'm not quite sure from the uh, uh, Erste Divisie, and Breda play against Emmen. But last time time around, uh, I think when Emmen played, they actually got relegated through that rather early on. So, so those teams, although Venlo uh, and Breda finished lower in, in, in the table there, I wouldn't count them really out. I don't know much about Almere City, to be honest with you and then we have of course the other playoffs which is for the last conference league qualification spot we have Herrenveen against Twente and we have Utrecht against Sparta Rotterdam let's see how it will pan out um it's nothing against Sparta Ro 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 Rotterdam but given what jerseys I have I don't have yet a Sparta Rotterdam jersey so I would like one of the other three to make it let's go over into France, where we had a very, very, very interesting uh, round. I mean, it started already with a brilliant game. Lyon um, downing uh, Monaco 3-1 with Ryan Shirky being an absolute brilliant, brilliant form. Uh, the roulette he did ahead of the 2-1 through Kaka Gray is just uh, highlight stuff. Go wa wa watch it. Wissam Benjeda actually gave Monaco a very early lead that, like I said, and Nicolas just just before that before. Uh, Ryan Shirky just put it into to the next level. He also makes in the 3-1. Big dent for Nantes, who really look like they're going down at this point in time. Um, they are, ever since they lost the cup final, they seemingly cannot get anything to together. Losing 3-0 at home to Montpellier. Not low, low looking good for Nantes, and I really, really would love that they could stay in, but yeah. Probably not, not gonna happen. Uh, Lille against uh, Marseille is a match that I actually watched and it was a rather in interesting and tight match, tight, tight affair. Um, probably the better from OM in the first half who took down the lead through Jonathan Kloss. Um, but then in the second half, Lille came back, uh, Jonathan David uh, getting an uh, equalizer through a penalty. And then Bamba in the 72nd give Lille the lead and that actually not only gave the advantage uh, to Lens for qualifying for the Champions League, but also gave Lille a real shot because they wouldn't want to help Lens, their local rival, but gave them a chance to actually go back into Europe. Um, Rennes suddenly get a form together, 5-0 away at Ajax. So uh, I was only 4-0 at the half. I think there were also sometimes some ugly scenes uh, where I think Ajax offense try, uh, wanted to... No, uh, the ultras of Ajax so were threatening the families of the Ajaxo player. So a really, 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 really weird uh, situation there. Uh, Trois Strasbourg 1-1. One, one. I think this was a re result in Strasbourg. A safe loss then 3-1 at Lorient, putting themselves in a really good position to qualify for the Champions League. And they have had an amazing, outstanding season. 
And then PSG more or less make secure that they will win the title. Although in typical PSG fashion, it did not look good. I mean, after eight minutes, Mbappé had scored two goals. Sinayoko pulls one back right after the half. And then it was kind of a little bit, you know, squeaky bump time in, in a way, if you would like. Uh, another Mbappé goal was then disallowed. But PSG at that moment could only be called level on points and with a superior goal difference. It was de facto already the championship but not quite done yet. And then second to last match day. Yes, we are very, very close to the end of the season. Um, let's start, let's pick out the fights. Uh, the, let's first go for the Champions League uh, battle where Lance with a 3-0 over Jacques so it was already the half 3-0, secure their Champions League spot because at the same time, OM, uh, and I think they were playing in their new churches, which look quite in, in, in interesting, losing at home to Brest. Not good. Two losses law in a row. The season's going pear-shaped. You got Ligue Vazan Bemba and then Kamara just a few few minutes later gives the win for the Bretons. So, um, big one right there. Then, um, for, the, um, Euro for, for, for the European spots, Lyon actually keep themselves in the running with a 3-0 over Stade Reims. Uh, Stade Reims. No, Reims. Uh, who are after a really good uh, part through, uh, with Will Will Steel, are kind of a little bit now, uh, you know, finishing midfield. And the good, the good thing is that he decided to stay uh, at Reims to kind of, he wants to see uh, if he's really, you know, if he can build a little, little, little bit more. It's, it is not just a blip. But Leon, late, most likely too late, finding good form, uh, Lacazette and um, Kakre and an own goal give that win and the other southern french team although it's not really french losing 2-0 at uh, Stade Rennes uh, so Maya and Guiri scoring two, two goals and Monaco who so much looked like they will gonna finish at least third might finish not even the European spots also not looking good there and Stade Rennes might actually salvage the season late on uh, further results, let's go to the uh, re relegation battle, but also with the European spots, there is the Lille North result. North had a 1 0 lead and they desperately need the points. They desperately need the points. Uh, however, again, like they did against OM, they turned around these two penalties by Jonathan David uh, that give Lille a win. Lille going therefore into the European spots. North now really looking more or less down, down, down. They, they, it hurts because this is one of my uh, really favorite teams. And for me, this is a typical friend. This is one of the teams that should be in Liga, uh, like Bordeaux, which we may or may not get back. So uh, weird, weird times for sure. Uh, and to add insult to injury, to lose, uh, manage only a 1-1 one -one against Osea. So uh, not really good news. Uh, Osea actually increased the distance, albeit only by a point. I think there were also kind of some troubles as well, but I I don't recall uh, now exactly what was ha 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 happening. So it's all pointing towards Osea, who is another team. You know, they have been champ champions and, and, and it's on also kind of a traditional team for France, especially if you, like me, started watching uh, soccer in the 90s. And then PSG secured the title with a brilliant, glorious 1-1 one, one at Strasbourg. Uh, yes, they were probably the better team, and it is Messi who gives them the uh, he, who, who gives them the go-ahead goal as Mbappé assist. The two of them combining potentially for one of the last times. Halva Strasbourg uh, did not let, let, let up and got an equalizer through Gamero, um, and PSG cannot find a winner. However. That one point was, was enough. PSG are now also mathematically. There's no way that they can be caught anymore. They are champions for the 11th time. No other team in France has now as many titles as PSG. It was only saint and also at 10. However, I have to say, when I think about this uh, championship, it's a little bit like Bayern's. It was more or less stumbling into it towards the end of, of, of the season by just having built so much at the beginning. And now at the end, uh, it looks kind of anticlimactic, and I'm not sure how much you know ownership PSG can actually take of the title because it was not good. It simply was not good, and the team was a mess. They again did not advance in the champ Champions League. Uh, so yeah, uh, there's big things will be asked. I mean, Mbappé has already said he will stay in Paris. I don't think Messi will stay in Paris. I. 
think he will go to Barcelona, which makes no sense. If he will go to Saudi Arabia, would also make no sense to me. I would love that if he ties, cuts all ties with Saudi Arabia, but I guess money is talking. If he doesn't stay in Paris, my dream would be that he goes back to Argentina, but I guess uh, security is a major concern there, especially since his hometown Rosario is now kind of known as a mafia maker as well. So, you know, probably not gonna happen. But with one um, round to go, we have the first three are now more or less a set, a set in stone. A PSG are the champions, uh, lost in the Champions League, and Marseille will go to the um, qualification round. Lille at the moment are in fourth place ahead of Stade Rennes, and it's only those two that will make it into the respective com com competition because Toulouse have won the cup and they will go into the Europa League. So we have Stade Rennes in there at 65 points, Monaco also 65 points, but Stade Rennes holding the advantage. That's uh, it. And Lyon could get into the Conference League if both Rennes and Monaco lose. But they then need to win big because they have a nine. There needs to be a nine goals win in favor of them if they want to catch Stade Rennes. So most likely it ain't gonna happen. On the bottom, Nantes look really in trouble. Two points behind Osea, 44% still because Nantes has a higher rating. So I think it's uh, probably worth it to look at the final uh, matches as well because Nantes have a manageable one against Angers. Whereas Osea play against Lens, and that's the only chance. But Nantes will need to win. And they need loss to win against Osea as well. Uh, will a draw do? A uh, draw might do as well. So uh, Osea loss, a draw, and not win, not are saved. It's not an easy one. And the last home game of Messi with PSG will happen probably against Clermont if he even plays. Uh, what could have been a really tight one at the end, Ajax against OM, I think will be rather. You know, nothing to play for, for either one of them. In any case, we have a last round, we have playoffs, so I have decided I will do pro probably uh, one last video on these after the playoffs in the Dutch League are done. Everything else is already decided, and then we'll talk also about the last round in France. Please let, let me know a little bit more if you want to add anything about the happenings. If you've watched a little bit more than I did, I would be more than happy with that. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you see more. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.